20. A Adunakor, Ta Herunumen. He was born in the year 2709, and he ruled for 63 years until his death in 2962. He was the first king to take the scepter with a title in the Adunaic tongue. Though out of fear, as aforesaid, a name in Quenya was inscribed in the scrolls. But these titles were held by the faithful to be blasphemous, for they signified Lord of the West, by which title they had been wont to name one of the great Valar only, Manwe in especial. In this reign the elven tongues were no longer used, nor permitted to be taught, but were maintained in secret by the faithful, and the ships from Erisea came seldom and secretly to the west shores of Numenor thereafter. 21. Ar Zimrathon, Ta Hostomir. He was born in the year 2798, and he ruled for 71 years until his death in 3033. 22. Ar Sakalthor, Ta Falasion. He was born in the year 2876, and he ruled for 69 years until his death in 3102. 23. Ar Gimilzor, Ta Telemnar. He was born in the year 2960, and he ruled for 75 years until his death in 3177. He was the greatest enemy of the faithful that had yet arisen, and he forbade utterly the use of the Elder in tongues, and would not permit any of the Eldar to come to the land and punish those that welcomed them. He revered nothing, and went never to the hallow of Eru. He was wedded to Inzilbeth, a lady descended from Tar Kalmakil, but she was secretly of the faithful, for her mother was Lindorie of the house of the lords of Andunie, and there was small love between them, and strife between their sons. For Inziladun the elder was beloved of his mother and of like mind with her, but Gimilchad the younger was his father's son, and him our Gimilzor would fain have appointed his heir, had the laws allowed. Gimilchad was born in the year 3044, and he died in 3243. 24. Tar Palantir, Ar Inziladun. He was born in the year 3035, and he ruled for 78 years until his death in 3255. Tar Palantir repented of the ways of the kings before him, and would fain have returned to the friendship of the Eldar and the lords of the West. This name Inziladun took, because he was far-sighted both in eye and in mind, and even those who hated him feared his words as those of a true seer. He also would spend much of his days in Andunie, since Lindorie, his mother's mother, was of the kin of the lords, being sister indeed to Iarandor, the fifteenth lord and grandfather of Numendil, who was lord of Andunie in the days of Tar Palantir, his cousin. And Tar Palantir would ascend often to the ancient tower of King Minastir, and gaze westward in yearning, hoping to see, maybe, some sail coming from Erisea. But no ship came ever again out of the west, because of the insolence of the kings, and because the hearts of the most part of the Numenorians were still hardened. For Gimilchad followed the ways of Ar Gimilzor, and became leader of the king's party, and resisted the will of Tar Palantir as openly as he dared, and yet more in secret. But for a while the faithful had peace, and the king went ever at due times to the hallow upon the Menaltama, and the white tree was again given tendance and honour, for Tar Palantir prophesied, saying that when the tree died, then the line of the kings also would perish. Tar Palantir married late and had no son, and his daughter he named Miriel in the elven tongue. But when the king died, she was taken to wife by Pharazon, son of Gimilchad, who also was dead, against her will, and against the law of Numenor, since she was the child of his father's brother. And then he seized the scepter into his own hand, 
taking the title of Ar Farazon, Tar Kalion, and Miriel was named Ar Zimraphel. 25. Ar Farazon, Tar Kalion, the mightiest and last king of Numenor. He was born in the year 3118 and ruled for 64 years and died in the downfall in the year 3319, usurping the scepter of Tar Miriel, Ar Zimrafa. She was born in the year 3117 and died in the downfall. And last of all, the mounting wave, green and cold and plumed with foam, climbing over the land, took to its bosom Tar Miriel the Queen, fairer than silver or ivory or pearls. Too late she strove to ascend the steep ways of the Menel Tarma to the holy place, for the waters overtook her, and her cry was lost in the roaring of the wind. Of the deeds of Ar Farazon, of his glory and his folly, more is told in the tale of the downfall of Numenor, which Elendil wrote and which was preserved in Gondor. <laughs>